This is 100% perennial ryegrass. I planted it as part of a complete renovation in September of 2019. In this video, I'm going to explain why and how I did the renovation. The format of this video is more like a slideshow since I'm working with older photos and did not take video during the renovation. But I hope you stick with me for this one since I'm going to detail exactly how I went from this to this. So stay tuned. At the end of last season, I made the decision to kill the entire lawn and start all over. I wasn't happy with the overall look of the yard. It was a mix of wide-bladed fescues, bluegrasses, and ryegrass. I lived with that look for eight years and it wasn't that bad, but then I was getting weeds I was unable to control with the selective herbicides I had. After watching YouTube for inspiration, I decided to take the nuclear option and start the renovation. To start, I mowed the lawn several times. After each mow, I lowered the deck until it bottomed out and I was scalping the yard. Doing this made it easier to bag the clippings. Then I used the Groundskeeper 2 thatch rake to manually dethatch the yard. Then I mowed again to collect the thatch. This tool is amazing. I'll put a link to this as well as all the products I use for this project in the description below. Since the remaining grass was going to be left in place, I took an additional measure and applied dethatch from the next line of products offered by the Green County Fertilizer Company. Dethatch is a liquid thatch digester, and I applied it at a rate of 9 ounces per thousand square feet. I also wanted to add some humic acid to the soil, so I applied Green County's Humic 12, also at a rate of 9 ounces per thousand square feet. If you need a refresher on how to measure your yard, click the card above. Many have asked if there was a secret sauce or whatever to the success of this renovation. Well, humic acid and the use of biostimulants are that secret sauce. You see, humic acid is a soil amendment that chelates or makes available the nutrients in the soil and makes it available for plant uptake. In other words, it increases the grass plant's ability to take up nutrients that are readily available in the soil. Next, I applied glyphosate to the entire yard with a cheap one gallon pump sprayer. The brand I used was Roundup, and the rate I used was per label instructions for this specific bottle at six ounces per 300 square feet. I waited a day before moving on to the next step, which was top dressing with screened fill dirt. This was a very labor intensive effort. At the time, I was recovering from a back injury and was very fortunate to have the help from a neighbor. Together, we spent several hours spreading the dirt around the yard over the course of two days. Now I opted for fill dirt because I wanted to have better control over the organic material, which I'll cover in a moment. But I also had to work quickly with the fill dirt and keep it relatively moist once it was spread out because if it dried, it would harden and form almost a thin, crusty layer. I used the landscape rake to do the fine grading and help level out the high and low spots. Then I rented a lawn roller from the Home Depot to assist with smoothing out and breaking up the soil clumps. I also wanted to make sure that the new soil was nice and pressed into the existing soil. I ended up rolling the lawn about four times before applying seed, going back and forth between the roller and the landscaping rake to really keep things smooth and level. By September 10th, I was ready to put the seed and fertilizer down. You may notice a blue tint to the soil in this photo. I mixed Tenacity herbicide and turf marking dye and did a blanket application over the entire yard. I used the dye as a visual indicator to make sure I got an even application over the entire yard. Tenacity is an herbicide that can be used as a pre and post emergent herbicide. That means it can be used to prevent weeds from germinating or emerging from the ground pre emergent and can be used to control weeds that have already germinated and sprouted post emergent. The nice thing about Tenacity is that it has the pre-emergent control property, but allows turf grass seed to germinate. The application rate for pre-emergent use is different than for post-emergent use. I went with the high side of the range and used one teaspoon per thousand square feet. Next, it was time to start putting down the good stuff. I used my rotary spreader to apply Scott's starter fertilizer. The rate was three pounds per thousand square feet. The starter fertilizer is important because it contains a good amount of all three macronutrients. Those are the three numbers you see on the bag, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You see, nitrogen drives growth, phosphorus pushes root development, and potassium helps with disease resistance and increased hot and cold weather tolerances. Next up, 
I spread some Malorganite at 12 pounds per thousand square feet. I'm a huge fan of this stuff for two reasons. One, it will not burn your yard, and two, it contains 4% iron. And iron is a micronutrient that helps give grass that beautiful dark green color. And now for the star of the show, the seed. This is 100% perennial ryegrass sourced from a single cultivar of seed. My goal was a uniform look of one single type of grass. Hey guys, so I wanted to just interrupt this real quick to let you know that it's important to understand the risk associated with going with a single cultivar of seed. Now, there is no biodiversity now in my yard. It is one type of seed. So you have to understand if you are gonna do something like this, there is no diversity to protect you against certain types of disease or fungus or extreme weather conditions that could potentially kill your entire yard. Usually in mixes you get that biodiversity uh, where you know some grass types are more tolerant than others. So for instance, if you have a disease come through that wipes out the perennial ryegrass, well maybe the tall fescue in that mix is more tolerant to that and that's what you'll see left over in the yard. Here with my situation, I have to take extra precautions and be extra careful and make sure I'm staying on top of things because I am at risk of totally losing everything and I know that I'm taking that on and I'm in the yard every day making sure and helping and to prevent a total loss of the yard. So I hope you understand that. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. I bought this seed from Seed Superstore. They are sort of a boutique store for high quality seed. It's important to get seed that has 0% weed seeds in the analysis. For perennial ryegrass, I followed the seeding rate for a new lawn which is 8 pounds per 1,000 square feet. Once the seed and fertilizers were down, I went over the yard again with a lawn roller to press everything into the soil. The next step is an important step. I spread peat moss over the entire yard to cover the seed. Peat moss is great because it mimics seed to soil contact, offers resistance to erosion during light rain events, protects seed from birds, does an excellent job with retaining moisture, and is a good visual indicator for when the ground needs water. But another great thing about peat moss is that it does not contain weed seeds or harmful microorganisms. After I roped off the yard, there was only one thing left to do, water. It is absolutely critical to keep the soil moist until the seeds germinate. That's why I like peat moss. There is a stark contrast between dry and wet peat moss. The goal is to never let the seed dry out. I don't have a proper sprinkler system. Instead, I bought 10 cheap impact sprinklers and ran a bunch of hose off of timers to make sure I had total coverage. Two days after seeding, a strong storm whipped through, dumping quite a bit of rain in a short amount of time. I thought I was going to lose everything, but things turned out okay. I think the grass we left in place played a huge role in keeping everything together. I also think pressing the seed with the roller helped. And after four days, we had germination. And after that, the grass really started to take off. One of the nice properties of perennial ryegrass is that it establishes very quickly. I did have about 15 pounds of seed left over and used that to fill in some thinned out spots while the new grass was coming up. 11 days after seeding, this is what it looked like. After only 23 days, I felt like it was ready to mow. I couldn't help but put the lawn roller on to see how the new lawn would stripe. After doing so, I was rewarded with this. It looked awesome. I was so happy with the results. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I have lots of new content coming and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining.